in this house. Before I even started writing it, I wanted to make a movie that everyone could have a personal interpretation for themselves. And one thing I've noticed is some people ask me what things mean, but for the most part, the fans don't want me to answer that because they they want they want to figure it out for themselves. And also what their meaning is, is much more meaningful than what I can say. So some of uh, reading through a lot of these theories have been incredible, right? So the coma theory, the child abuse theory, the Kyle Edward Ball is the monster theory. They're all so amazing and all of them are correct and all of them are incorrect at the same time. I don't really want to say anything, but I will tell you some one thing. And this has already been documented, but I don't know if everyone knows it. People have asked in the sh dark shots if there's anyone in there. And I will tell you, there is one shot in the movie where we had to get someone to stand in frame to get proper framing. And I had darkened it so much that there you can't quite see them, but they are still a little bit evident. So there is one shot in the movie where there is literally someone standing in the dark, but I'm never going to say what shot it is. In this world. You know, I think we all have that nightmare. I, I, um, I think a lot of people don't necessarily remember it, but I swear everyone has it. And I think it's very interesting. I think most people, they have it between the ages of six and 10 years old. And I think that's because that's the age where you're first having to deal with the world uh, in a very meaningful way without your parents' help, right? So that's when you go to kindergarten, grade one, grade two, grade three. And it's because that's your mind processing, okay, I have to deal with things where my mom and dad can't help me anymore, right? So I think that's that's our, our subconscious trying to um, deal with that, dealing with, okay, I'm, I have to keep, I have to deal with the world. And also in grade one and grade two, you first realize, okay, I, this isn't going to change. This is only going to get worse. I'm going to have to deal with the world more and more and more and more. And my parents are going to be there to help me less and less and less and less. Right. So I think that's why we have the dream. Yeah, um, so I remember what first got me really profoundly into internet horror was when I was in film school, the Marble Hornets series, which was kind of the big thing that um, projected the Slenderman myth into popular culture. And then after that, I, I had dabbled in and out of horror and had also read a lot of creepy pastas. Um, and the fun thing about creepy pasta is you really have to search to find because there's so many creepy pastas and a lot of them are terrible. So you have to kind of search to find the really good ones, the really profound ones, right? And that's kind of the interesting thing about internet horror too, is you have to look through through it, right? And sift through it to find the gold, right? So yeah. <laughs> 